Behind me is Chaska. Now you all know Chaska, of course, Roy and Lily, who came on the rally with us. Uh, they are about two weeks ahead of us in the yard. They've been here now for, what, three weeks or so. And uh, Roy is basically taking back all of the paintwork, including on the top sides, right back to the gel coat. Unfortunately, he has found uh, little bits of osmosis. Uh, now, the interesting thing here is that the osmosis he's getting is literally just on the gel coat. It hasn't gone all the way through into the fiberglass. Since about a year after the boat, I started noticing little blisters in the top sides. There's nothing in the below the waterline, but just on the waterline and above the waterline, above and below each groove in the, the imitation planking, and it's um, I suspected it was osmosis. So started digging away, and after we sanded the old paint off, we saw as it was actually the start of osmosis, but it's pretty fine. It's um, it's in the gel coat rather than in the glass so we're just going through the gel coat drilling through the gel coat back into the fiberglass just to make sure we've got it all and then we'll start drying it out it's going to be a long slow process i think but thank god it's not bloody bad it's just mm. pretty minor so what he's doing is he's using a dremel uh, just to get into that gel coat and grind them out and obviously he's going to do the usual thing flush them through with water and so on uh, and then just patch them up but uh, you can see there's a lot of them but it's nothing like the kind of osmosis treatment that we did with Esper. Week two in the boatyard let's just have a quick look at what's been done so far uh, we started off, I say we, I mean we got uh, one of the local guys here, one of the contractors to start doing the wet and dry sanding of the uh, skeg and the rudder. Unfortunately with wet and dry it takes a very long time. Um, much better to do it with electric sander which is what you can hear now. The lad that did the wet and dry lasted two days and uh, we never saw him again. I think his arms were aching a little bit. So we've got another couple of guys, uh, we've got one person today but uh, the last couple of days we've had two people with the orbital sanders and they've been uh, cracking on. Uh, it's a slow process though. We've got all of that old anti-foul and the primer to take right the way back to the original Jotomastic 87, which is the barrier coat we put on in the refit. So where it's gray, that's good. So one of the things that we've got to do is take off the max prop. Uh, we're going to replace the dripless seal and in order to replace the dripless seal, that means we have to pull the shaft in order to pull the shaft, we have to take the max prop off completely, including the hub, so that we can get it past the uh, skeg and the rudder. So we've got a max prop classic, and I'll just show you how this is uh, configured and show you all the different Allen bolts that we've got to clean up and take off. Starting with the hub, we have six Allen bolts here. One, two, three, one, two, three. And they all sit on this half. And these are two larger ones, and there's a smaller one at the back. Don't ask me what the measurements are of these yet. I can't remember. But uh, so we've got those six ones there. They keep the hub on together, like so. At the back, you'll see there's uh, the, I suppose you could call it a cap. Uh, and this holds the hub together uh, at the back end and uh, so that is held on with a further six allen bolts here you can see them one two three four five six and then the last three allen bolts are for our anode look at that anode that's that's after two years so it hasn't done too badly i suppose i guess it's still doing its job um, so we'll take this one off first and then we'll take off this cap which we can take off like so this will allow us to take the blades off and then the last thing we'll do is to take off the body now just whilst we're here more for my own records than anything else to be honest is uh, how the blades go on if we look at this side profile 
we have to make sure that the straight edge goes at the front and this curved bit here that goes at the back. Oh, by the way, just a couple other things to be aware of. Each of these blades is numbered. So this is, uh, there's, there we go, there's blade number two. It's got that embossed in there and that correlates with this side here on the hub. So really important to make sure you line those two up. The other thing as well is that uh, this, the previous owner had actually had this marked. So this hub only goes on in one position and the, it's been scored here on the body and on the hub. So we know exactly where to put that when we come to put it back on. Very important. So I'll probably want to take the prop off in this position. Together, right? yeah. You got two? Yep. It's dry, isn't it? Isn't it? Right, thanks to Roy, just brought his angle grinder because mine's broken. Got to get a new one. Uh, but uh, we've just used a wire brush on it and cleaned up the hub. Now, look at this. This is very important. This has been marked on both the rim at the end there and on the hub itself. Those two correlate with each other, which basically says when these two are in line, the gear system inside corresponds to uh, this one hole. I'll try and get inside here, see what we can see, but on this gear system is marked uh, some letters, and in my case, I think it's the letter K, lines up with the hole that's inside there. So at least I know that uh, this is in the right position. Okay, so with the central hub taken off, it now reveals this inside gear. And again, this is, should be marked and mine has a hole punched V on that spline and that correlates to the V on the center hub there. This, by the way, just pulls out and uh, that is it. That's the whole thing done. And I think I can then take my shaft out with just this uh, hub remaining. <laughs> I have been tasked with the job of checking all of our seacocks, something that you really should do every time you haul out. And it's something that we should do every week. We should be just turning them every week. And to be honest, we don't always do that. So it does mean a couple of them are a bit stiff. So the first one I'm looking at is this one down here, Jamie's footwell. Um, and it's the, it's the intake for our toilet, our heads. It's down here, I'll show you. Originally, this is an old Blake's Seacock. It came with the boat. They're really, really good. They're supposed to last forever and it's still in really good nick. It wasn't that colour when I opened up. It was the colour of what you see there. It was pretty manky and in quite a bad state. So I took it all apart. I had to uh, put a WD-40 on to get all this moving so I took it all out cleaned it all up and it's ready to go back in so that will just go back in there like that um, <laughs> before I put it back though I just need to clean up the through hole here so I have already ran that up from the outside and from the inside but before I put this on I'm also going to pour down some unblocker and that will kill any little beasties that are still hanging around. I just I've, I've filled it up from the outside with a little plug so it can just sit there for about five minutes then I'll release it and then I'll be ready to put it back. Now that's the first one. I think I've got eight more to do. I think it's eight. They're not all beautiful blakes. Some of them are a bit more modern uh, and some are in better condition than others. But I just thought I'd do the easy one first. Ease myself into this job. <laughs> 